Let's talk tractor third function valves for just a little bit. This is my 2016 LS XJ 2025H and I've uh, somehow managed to come up with enough pieces to get a third function valve on here. I'm not quite through with it yet but I'm close enough that I thought I could answer a few questions that are pretty common on the tractor boards uh, about how you go about installing third function valve and what's on there. This is not going to be a complete tutorial because really that's impossible due to the fact that there's so many differences in the various tractors and um, where you might want to locate it on your unit, where you have room to locate it on your unit, etc. I chose the Uh, Summit um, hydraulics uh, third function kit and um, I've been pleased with it so far as I say I don't have it finished but um, there's no reason it wouldn't work I just had to figure out where everything went and through the course of uh, digging for the information I realized that it's pretty common to not know where all all of the hidden secrets lie about how these things work and what it takes to get one of them put on Let's start off with just an overview of it, and then I'll delve into some of the issues I've had with it. As you can see, I do have it mounted here on the side where it's a little bit vulnerable to uh, brush. I've got a lot of brush I've got to clear over the next two or three years, and um, a grapple is going to be essential. So I had to get this on here and get it running, and then uh, in just a few weeks I'll be able to take some time, and I'm going to build another bracket that comes out here and gives me some protection here from the brush. I'll probably also reroute this hose here at a later date. I'll explain more about what the hoses are and how I got there in just a second. Uh, as you can see here are the hoses that, that will be going up to, um, to power the grapple jaws. And uh, one thing I want to make note of here because it's one of the things that I really kind of wish I'd done a little bit differently. As you can see, I've used the half inch uh, AG Quick Connects here. Now, I like the AG Quick Connects, but I really wish that on this unit I had not gone up to one half inch, uh, three eighths, plenty large. I use the half inch because um, Someone suggested that it would give me the most flexibility for adapting to other implements I might put on the front of my loader arms. Now, that's true, except that all you really need to do is to put some adapters up here on the front wherever you want them. Uh, in my case, I have a couple of 18 inch extensions that are gonna go out here. And I'll be able to put on a flat face valve, an AG valve, whatever I want out here to hook up if I borrow or rent an implement that the regular AG valves won't work on. So um, I terminated these here and I really wish I'd stayed with the 3 8 inch fittings and I'll show you why as we move back around the other side of the tractor here. You don't need half inch of course to support the flow for one of these smaller tractors. And the, and the half inch is large, so it takes up quite a bit of space in here. These smaller 3 8 inch valves, like came on the tractor here, take up far less space. And it will give you better mounting options if you stick with 3 8 inch, at least on your valve end, okay? There's no reason that you can't put the half inch on the other end if that's what you want. But if it were me, I would stick with... Uh, some uh, AG Quick Connects and I would build me some adapters to go on that end based on what I was going to put on there and how much length of hose I needed. You don't want a bunch of hose up there flapping around if you don't have an implement on there if you're just running your box. So now let's dive in a little bit to what I've got going on here, where the problems were, and uh, what I've done to solve them. Okay. Uh, first thing, that, that let's start right here because this is kind of easy to do. This hose here 
this hose here, is the uh, power beyond port on this Besco valve. Now the Besco valve uh, is used on a lot of a lot of the smaller tractors and I have come to find that it's also sold under a couple of different names. Um, I believe it's also sold as a Prince valve. One of the hardest things you'll have to find out in many cases is which one of these is really your power beyond port and does it do you need the um, the uh, sleeve in it here. My tractor had it on here and it had this banjo connection right here and this particular setup the power beyond flow came out of out of here the 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 hose was led down this away and it ran back here like I have it running now as you can see it comes back in here to the return point on the tank now I believe they did this for a reason if they wanted to put um, a set of another set of valves back here on the back they could have easily just spliced in another line here and gone straight on back here to it and it probably also made it easier if they put a factory third function on here which I doubt very many of these tractors have uh, came with because the popularity of the grapples is really just starting to take off lately now what I'm going to do is this valve here, this uh, port here, is going to have a 45 degree connection and it's going to connect right here to this. Okay, this hose here is going to come back into my, this is the input or the power side of the uh, summit valve, okay, for the third function. Now, since I was in a hurry, I didn't bother. I just let this loop up here. Um, just let it loop up like this. Um, again, that's something I can fix later on, and I'll probably fix this with, with um, um, a much shorter piece of line that I'll have to have made up here to fit in here more correctly. Um, one of the things that's going to happen, I think, to you with nearly any kit is this where you mount your valve you know that can vary from tractor to tractor so this same valve could serve a lot of different tractors uh, basically up to 15 gallons per minute flow and you know there's no you have quite a bit of, of, of quite a bit of apparatus out here to put somewhere and yet not all tractors have a good place to mount this now this kit comes with a metal valve, I mean a metal bracket. This is not the bracket that came with this kit. Uh, the bracket that came with this kit, let me grab it right quick. You can see I'm, I'm one of those guys that's meticulously organized. Um, I keep my garage just absolutely pristine, neat, so that I can find anything I want in less than four or five hours. Uh, some of you are probably the same way. At any rate, this bracket had an offset on it, and it would work quite well many places. The back of this block mounts in these holes here, okay? Um, I really couldn't find a place that I liked on here to mount the, the valve using this bracket. So I chose to use a piece of um, aluminum that I had here. And a large part of my reason for choosing this is because I'm probably going to leave this valve out here and I will just weld me uh, some more aluminum on here and build me an extension out here to protect the to protect the valve. Um, we'll see how that goes later on. You're going to find whatever you do that you're going to have to find some place to locate this valve, and boy, it's hard. And the larger your fittings are in here, the more difficult it is. I almost think I could have gotten this mounted over on this side of the bracket had I used the three-eighths fittings instead of the half inch. 
be that here or there it doesn't matter i like this installation just fine this is going to be a decent place for it when i get finished with the setup on the tractor here so let's go back and talk about this what needs to happen here is this power beyond port is going to come out hook into this hose here this hose here is going to flow over and this is the power in port on the valve <clears throat> this is the tank side of the valve coming out or what you would consider to be the extension of the power beyond port now as you can see i've chosen to use a couple of of l fittings in here and i've gone back to my 3 8 size here because of the just the room and because of this hose here i wanted to have a a smaller hose here i had no reason wait a second i had no reason to have a half inch return tank return on this i'm waiting on a union here for this valve the, for this fittings here and this will connect right here and that'll give me connection to the return line to go back to the tank this hose is already led down and formed underneath the floorboard of the tractor i'll be removing this old hose here it'll come off and my new hose here will connect right into the return line here now I probably am going to add another block control block back here later on so that I can run a flail mower that can slide and dolly in and out um, so I can jog the mower the mower over or back in line with the tractor so that I'm mowing around fence posts and that sort of thing I can just jog the flail out and back in I'm not going to use one of the large swing arm types of uh, of a flail mowers this would just be one that jogs back and forth so to do that i'm going to just disconnect this line connect an extension back here to where the block will be back here for it whoops connect an extension for the block will mount back here so this line will come back to the extension block through the extension block back out and then back in again to the return on the tank Now let's see if there's anything here. Oh yeah, there's a couple more things I need to tell you about. I'll show you first of all the back side of this bracket here, what I've done with that. Um, if I can keep my fingers out of the picture. So I managed to route this wire down through here. These are the wires that control the valves. And uh, they are run down through and up underneath up underneath the cowling of of the tractor it goes underneath the cowling here and i ran them over to my hot switch here and i spliced in to the switched side of the ignition most ignitions are going to have two wires in that are the cold side and unswitched power coming to it there'll be a hot and a ground lead and then there'll be two going out that have um, the switched side of the ignition on it so i spliced into those two lines and put it right there and that lets my function work on the the joystick up here <clears throat> i chose to just cut the grip off of the other one uh, now i did i left the stick the full length i may shorten this down a little bit uh, the stick's a little bit long right now and i'm not exactly sure how tall i want that i'm pretty long armed and gangly i may shorten it down some here and I also find that I have a lot more control over the stick when I'm handling it lower. I can go easier on the controls of it sometimes. But here are the buttons that control the A and B side of the valve. Those wires, I ran down through some protective tubing and all the way down over to that switch over there, okay? Um, I don't think there's anything else I can add to this other than, you know best of luck digging for all the parts you need um, some of the guys have said that they just bought the valve blocks and the the, the um, solenoids and put theirs together themselves that's probably just fine it wouldn't be much harder than going with the kit but i like this uh, summit hydraulics kit i thought it had a, a, a all the parts for it at a reasonable price the biggest problem of this whole thing is understanding what your threads are coming out of your power beyond block it turns out that these are for these banjos are uh let's see um 
they're British uh, standard thread ratios and you'll need to figure out what the size is on that for your tractor uh, there are some charts online that you can use and uh, your best friend is going to be a some kind of a uh, of a caliper to help you understand exactly what you're looking at there okay um, so I finally managed to find a fitting that'll go into this port and will give me a 45 degree angle up here so I can tie this into here but it took some looking the, the other thing that I had a hard problem finding was a, uh, an actual functional diagram for the best co valve. Now, I did find it. Um, one of them was written in all Korean. I found various bits and pieces. And uh, <laughs> we found some pages in, in some of the um, LS um, owner's manuals that helped a lot. I think if you could get your hands on a service manual for one of these things, a true service manual, a real one that tells you how to take things apart and put them back together, that would be a really good starting place. I've built a ton of street rods and hot rods and first one thing and the other, so I don't, you know, I just kind of know what the problem is going to be and I go try to figure it out. Um, and so in, in this case, I managed pretty well. This stumped me pretty good what the threads were on this guy. <coughs> and I did order a couple of pieces that didn't fit, which help my knowledge base some well that's about all I can think of on this um, I will post more links to the information on it as we go and um, I'll also do something uh, if, uh, if I find that it doesn't work I have no reason to believe it won't work as needed and um, I hope you wish you the best of luck on your installation be set off on it and uh, hopefully this will add to the information base about these things and and uh, as we go people have less and less trouble figuring these things out thanks a lot